Welcome to our first example for calculating electric fields of point charges. So two charges are held on a fixed horizontal plane. Q1, 1 microcoulomb, is at negative 1, 3 centimeters. And Q2, negative 2 microcoulombs, is at the origin. Find the net electric field at point P3 at 2 and 1 centimeter. And here's a diagram of the situation with Q1 and Q2 at the origin. The next thing we want to do is draw the two electric field vectors at point P3. Since Q1 is positive, the electric field E1 is going to point away from Q1. And because Q2 is negative, the electric field E2 is going to point towards E2. There is a problem. In a, with my diagram because I've made E1 bigger than E2. Probably the electric field of Q1 is smaller because it's further away and because the charge is smaller. However, it's just a sketch, so we'll leave it for now. Next, we calculate the magnitude of the electric field. So for E1, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 over R1 squared plug in the numbers, 9 times 10 to the 9, multiplied by the 1 microcoulomb, and divided by 0 0.03 squared plus 0 0.02 squared. So remember that that's the hypotenuse of the triangle that you see in blue on the picture, the total distance between Q1 and the point P3. That's 6.92 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. The next thing to do is to figure out the direction of E1. So in order to help me with that, I'm going to redraw my diagram again. The vector E1 points in the fourth quadrant along the line that joins Q1 to the point where we're calculating the field. So that's 3 centimeters across and 2 centimeters down. So I take the inverse tan of the opposite side, 0 0.02, over the adjacent side, 0 0.03. The negative angle just indicates that I'm counting the angle clockwise starting from the positive x-axis. That's negative 33.7 degrees. Next, let's get the magnitude of our second electric field. Once again, using the formula for point charges, the magnitude of the second electric field is 9 times 10 to the 9 times 2 microcoulombs divided by 0 0.01 squared plus 0 0.02 squared. That makes the magnitude of the vector 36 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. So I'm going to redraw a little sketch once again to figure out the direction. Here's a picture of the electric field vector pointing from P to the negative charge Q2. The angle that I've drawn is the inverse tangent of 0 0.01 over 0 0.02. But the angle of the vector is going to be that plus 180 degrees because we're always counting from the positive x-axis. This makes the angle 206.6 degrees. Now we're ready to split up our two vectors into their components and to add them up. So in the x direction, we're going to add the x component of our first electric field, which is 6.92 10 to the power of 6 cos negative 33.7 degrees, and we're going to add the x component of our second electric field. So 36 times 10 to the 6, cos of 206.6. I'm using cos in the two cases here because both my angles were defined from the positive x-axis. But if you had used some other convention, well, you might have ended up with a sine or even a tangent there. In the x direction, our net electric field is negative 26.4 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. Let's add up the components in the y direction. The x component of E1 is 6.92, 10 to the power of 6, sine negative 33.7 degrees. The y component of E2 is 36 times 10 to the 6, sine of 206.6 degrees. So the net field in the y direction is negative 20, 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb. All right, let's get the magnitude and the direction of the net field. Always, always, always draw a picture of your new vector to make sure you don't screw up. So here's my x component, my y component, and my net field. I'll start with the magnitude. 
Pythagorean theorems are easy. Square root of 26.4 10 to the power 6 squared plus 20 times 10 to the power of 6 squared and then the magnitude of my net electric field is 33.1 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb. The direction is going to be a little bit trickier. The direction of the vector is 180 degrees plus the angle phi on my picture. That's because you see the vector is to the left and down, so it's in the third quadrant. So 180 degrees plus the inverse tan of 20 divided by 26.4 is 217 degrees. And that makes the answer 33.1 times 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb at 217 degrees. But wait, here's a fun extra question. What if we want to know the net electric force on a charge Q3 placed at point P3 where we just calculated the field? Well, with your new knowledge of electric fields, it's never been easier. All you need to do is multiply the charge by the electric field. So the force on 3 microcoulombs at P3 is 99.3 newtons at 217 degrees. Wait! What if it was negative 3 microcoulombs instead of 3 microcoulombs? Well, you would do exactly the same thing, except that the force on a negative charge is in the opposite direction compared to the force on a positive charge. So the force on a negative charge would be 99.3 newtons at 37 degrees. Well, I'm all out of fun extra questions now. So we're done. Spread the joy of physics.